I've recently run into a little bit of a problem with uh, one of my corporate clients. Uh, they're fantastic, but unfortunately, uh, they're behind uh, a pretty thick firewall. Uh, their IT department has set up uh, very rigid security systems, uh, and rightly so. They're they're the kind of company that would would need to have that. So their network policies are very strict. Uh, anytime I try to send them, you know, a link to one of the prototype courses that I was using uh, Dropbox for, or I, I also had a uh, a GoDaddy uh, web space that I that I'd purchased as well and it was just problem after problem uh, Google Drive is another thing and and of course that's uh, you know the the functionality of these Dropbox type solutions uh, they're really not ideal for for housing your e-learning even if it's just for demo purposes so I recently had to find a new solution for sharing my content with them so that they could review it and make sure that it was you know, and met their expectations. Now I have to give credit where credit is due. This solution was born out of a similar video put out by the folks at Articulate. When publishing Adobe Captivate courses, there are a couple of small differences and uh, considerations that I think you need to make. So I thought I would make a short video that's sort of a part two to their video, but I obviously want to make sure that you're taking a look at their original video uh, that they have up on YouTube. And I'll provide you guys a, a link to it here. Um, you can find it here. It's called How to Create Amazon S3 Account to Upload Course or Websites. And it's a good video. Obviously, it's Articulate-centric. Uh, so I wanted to just make sure that you guys knew that there were a few things that, that I had to do and I thought I'd share those with you. Uh, so the first thing that you're going to need to do, and again, for greater detail, watch that other video, but you'll need to sign up for an Amazon Web Services account. And this is easy to do. I'll provide a link for that. Essentially, it's aws.amazon.com. And once you're there, you can uh, you can sign up. There'll be a little button on the page to allow you to sign up. I've already created my account and I'm all set to go. The next thing that you're going to want to do is uh, get this fantastic little software called Cloudberry Explorer. And uh, like before, I'll also include the links for this as well. Cloudberrylabs.com. The Explorer software that they make is essentially it's an FTP software, but it gives you a little bit greater control over setting uh, many of your server settings with the S3 service from Amazon. So uh, you're going to need to download this. There is a, pr a pro version for $39.99. Um, you know, this is a one time uh, per computer license. I actually don't think you need it. I think you can get away with just the uh, free Amazon S3 Explorer. And once you have that application running, you know, it's going to look very similar to a lot of FTP software that you might be familiar with. Uh, on the left hand side will be your local hard drive and on the right hand side will be your server. Uh, it will be blank at first and the very first thing that you're going to need to do is to create a new bucket. And a bucket is essentially where, uh, you know, a repository of where all your stuff is going to go. I've already created one. Uh, just a warning, though, it, it is uh, it does have to be a very unique name. The first name I tried to use was just Portfolio. And obviously, either that's a reserved name or one of the other users of the S3 service has already used that name. So I just called it Paul Wilson ProType. And once you've created that, uh, there's a couple things that you're going to need to do now. Here's where things get a little unique um, for creating and uploading e-learning. You're going to first of all want to set up a bucket policy. Now, I've already done that here, so I'll just click on the bucket policy and show you what I've already got. Now, I'll put this, uh, this stuff here uh, in the description of the video so that you can copy and paste it. Basically, all you need to do is change the bucket name, which is located right here, with whatever bucket name you come up with for your own S3 server. All this does, and the purpose of this is it allows, um, it allows all other users to see your content. Now that sounds like a security concern, but it's just basically website stuff. 
If you don't do this and try to provide users links to your content that's on the S3 server, they're going to get uh, access denied uh, error messages when they try to go to your uh, e-learning course. But once you apply this policy to your entire bucket, any of the folders, and you can see here I've dragged over the e-learning courses that I, I'm going to prototype with my client here, and then of course everything works fine. The other thing that you need to do, if your courses contain any SVG files, um, you're going to need to add an additional MIME type to your server so that it understands how to interpret SVGs. When I first tried this and launched my, my e-learning course, uh, the pages loaded fine, but every page that contained an SVG, which in my case was most of them, uh, it tried to download the SVG rather than displaying it. So what you need to do is you need to go into the Tools drop-down menu and go to HTTP headers. And at this point, what you're going to do is to add an HTTP header. You're going to give it a name, SVG, and you're going to add the value of image slash SVG plus XML. The XML part is because SVGs are essentially XML files. And then click OK and save that. And that's going to show up as a user-defined uh, MIME type or HTTP header. And I can double-click and show you this. This is image, SVG, XML. And then from that point forward, because you've applied that to your whole bucket, your whole uh, S3 server, all SVG files will display properly. And then, of course, once you've done that, you can continue to add additional prototype courses or portfolio samples uh, to your heart's content. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.